Gotta say, I'm pretty excited about Halloween this year. It's finally here. We've got our yard all decked out. We got the pumpkins carved. We got bucket loads of candy to give out. And I'm finally done putting all those little razor blades in them in my nefarious plot to murder random neighborhood children. Man, I sure hope their parents don't check the wrappers again this year, though, or I'll be foiled yet again. I I mean, look, we're a pretty fucked up culture when it comes to holidays. You know, we celebrate a fictional resurrection by hiding eggs and we celebrate a gift giving holiday by forcing our children to sit on the lap of an overweight man earning minimum wage. But of all our holiday traditions, I'm pretty sure the weirdest is the annual candy checking ritual. Right. And and maybe I'm just old and people don't do this anymore. Or maybe you're listening from a sane country and don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So to be clear. I'm talking about the period after trick-or-treating is over when little Noah comes home freezing to death behind his toilet tissue, thick Kmart superhero costume, weighed down with a pillowcase full of candy. But before he can eat any of it, mom and dad have to inspect it to make sure it hasn't been tampered with. And by tampered with, they mean had a razor blade inserted into it by a sociopathic neighbor who can't think of a less obvious or a less troublesome way to murder random children. And they were super clear on that. I, I'm, not, I'm just not sure why the supervillain wouldn't think to re-glue the package afterwards, but my parents were, or at least claimed to be, utterly convinced that A, there were people out there trying to booby trap my Halloween candy, and B, a cursory glance at the package would be enough to foil that homicidal plot. I honestly can't decide which of those is a weirder thing to believe. Of course, this was hardly idiosyncratic to my parents. Everybody's parents did this. They warned you about it in school. They had little public service announcements about it. Don't take Halloween candy that isn't wrapped. If some elderly lady took the time to make candied apples for every child in the neighborhood, it's safe to assume she poisoned them. Right. So don't take the chance. Stick with healthy standards like chocolate covered other chocolate and tubes of sugar that have been dyed blue. So it's a little less obvious that you're literally sucking down a tube of sugar. And to be honest, I don't know if society really believed all of that shit or if it was just one of those convenient lies to tell children like the tooth fairy or religion. It makes sense that my parents would want me to be scared as all hell to eat my candy while I was still out trick or treating. Right. Or, or maybe it was just so they could divide it up evenly between me and my siblings. Or maybe it was just a way for my dad to stash away a bunch of Snickers and Reese's cups before we'd done a count. But regardless of the reason, through ignorance or malice, my parents convinced me that there were people in the world cruel enough to stash razor blades in candy and that those people were so numerous that you had to operate as though there was one in every neighborhood. <laughs> I think about what a fucked up worldview that leaves kids with. Because I took that shit seriously. When I went door to door asking if I could rake leaves or shovel walks for a few bucks, I did so with the trepidation appropriate for a person who believes there was a good one in 30 chance that the person on the other side of the door was an elaborate psychopath, right? I, I, I would look at the candy in the store and I would think, hey, what's to stop the razor blade chocolatiers from branching out beyond Halloween? Is any candy safe? And why just candy? Couldn't one of them get a job at McDonald's and really speed this process up? And, and look, I know I just did a diatribe about irrational fear last week, but if there's ever a time of the year I can get away with back-to-back diatribes about fear, right? And, and I think it's important to draw a distinction here. It's bad to teach kids to be afraid of demons and ghosts and alien abduction. That can fuck them up something fierce. But you're on a whole new level when you start teaching them to fear each other. I mean, obviously, kids need some reasonable amount of fear there, right? Because there are bad people. You got to give them at least enough fear to stay out of the rapist's car, no matter how tasty that Kit Kat looks. But when you start inventing reasons... Right. Like you invent reasons for them to fear their neighbors. You've gone too goddamn far, no matter how convenient it is to have them unquestioningly turn over their candy for inspection at the end of Halloween. And in case it isn't already super obvious how this ties into the larger atheist theme of the show, let me spell it out for you. Children are taught to fear you. All over this fucking country, children are taught that your motivation and advocating for atheism, skepticism, evolution, geology, right? All of that is motivated by your desire to rend them from the arms of Christ. You're only pointing out the inconsistencies in the Bible and the immorality of God and Jesus because you want to rob them of eternal life and paradise. And what kind of fucking person would do that? Unless you think they soften this image by telling their kids that you're simply mistaken about religion, they supply you with a personal motivation. You're in love with sin. 
right? You so enjoy your sinful ways that you're willing to abandon rational belief in God in an effort to justify him. You don't disagree with their assertions about God. You reject them, and you do it all because you can't accept the charge to not be evil. The sole comfort is that we're not alone in our vilification. Right? We got the company of all the Muslims, all the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Jews, and probably the Mormons and Catholics, if we're being honest. Everyone unlike them is to be feared. They're not just different. They're not just mistaken. They are sinister. And the only way they can stop being sinister is to start agreeing with you about religion. Look, it should go without saying that teaching your kid to fear an immortal fire satyr is a bad thing. It doesn't go without saying, but it should. The only comfort we can take is that there are no real fire satyrs that are going to be mistreated and prejudged if these kids ever happen across them. But you'll lose that defense when you start teaching your kids that the devil might just be their neighbor. <laughs> 